The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Renata knew that using it could go catastrophically wrong. But he was sure he could figure out how to use it safely. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Iblis Stone was hidden there. It was a dangerous artifact. It could corrupt its user into a bloodthirsty monster. Maybe he could find a way to use it. To take its power without surrendering to its wickedness. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion. And he had a gut feeling that he needed to use that to his advantage. The island was windswept desert. No one went there except ostriches and ostrich hunters. The Iblis Stone. It would whisper promises in his ear, offering power for blood. But this time, Renato was sure he could master it. And so, Renato went ostrich hunting. Every child could sing verses about the Sky Ripper, but ancient codices held hints of other things. A stone that ate souls, a ruby that drank blood, a jewel only a righteous man could give away. Were all these things the Iblis Stone? Long hidden in a buried temple, another ancient item that was only resurfacing now, drawn up from the deeps by the Emperor's horrific rituals? They were still searching for a way in. Good. And he hadn't come too late. Wait, what? How was he outside? Hadn't he taken an elevator into the depths of the earth? some way to use the Iblis Stone. 
It was old, wasn't it? People are so much cleverer now. And Renato was pretty sure he was cleverer than most people. could not get past this point. Obviously the temple builders knew how to deal with tomb raiders. was a stone of the purest blackness. It reflected no light, like a void made solid. Nervous, he picked it up. I can make you mighty. Who said that? It was the stone, eager, thirsty. That seemed tempting and terribly wrong. Zenobia was the Emperor's greatest general and a potent witch. But they had been close once, and he had a sneaking suspicion the gem would try to control him. Why not capture the core of Sky Ripper instead? It was the eye of a lost god torn out by the transcendent Emperor to power his greatest weapon. What's the core? Said the stone anxiously. But even though Renato knew how evil the gem was, he had a clever plan for dealing with it. The stone bothered him. He hated being told what to do. Wasn't that why he joined the rebellion? Wasn't that why he'd refused to be a soldier? He'd agreed to come on board only if he could freelance. The stone felt a bit clingy, and he had a feeling it did not have his best interests at heart. The sage Calaveras had told him where to find the Sky Ripper, a weapon capable of challenging the gods. Even without its armature, the core would still possess great power. He would go there. The moment he landed the Farfarer, Renardo had a rare feeling of regret. It's not too late, he thought. He could turn around and sail for Zenobia's island. He frowned. Wait a minute. He didn't want to kill Zenobia, did he? Sure, technically she was the enemy, but they'd been at sword food school together. They'd never been lovers, but somehow they'd been closer. She'd told him every secret about herself, except the biggest one, that she was the Emperor's daughter. No, no. Kill There was something sour in the air. Like the earth had ruptured over something that had been fermenting for a very long time. Renato hoped his portal had been inspected recently. The stone hadn't lied about what it could do for him. With each raven he cut down, he felt a jolt of power flowing into his arm. You're weak, whispered the stone. The core will kill you. Are you afraid of it? <laughs> no, don't be ridiculous. It chuckled. But, but, but it's unstable. It's a poison if someone just carry it. And then if you try to use it, it will explode catastrophically. Renardo did not trust rocks that talked in his head. He went onwards. As he approached the core, the stone became hysterical. No, it's too much power. We'll rip a hole in space and time. 
He had a sudden vision of plunging his gauntlet into the core and dying in anguish. That wasn't his vision, was it? The stone had sent him its darkest fears, hadn't it? He had a sudden impulse to do exactly that. He raised his right fist and plunged it into the core. There was a rush of light. He thought he could hear the stone screaming. And then he passed out. When Renato came to, the core was gone. But the Iblis stone was no longer black, but glowing with a blue light. And it was silent. I can't hear you, he sang out, and you who? It didn't answer. Ha, he said. He had defeated the demonic gem with the power of his mind. Mm, he felt invincible. It was time to attack the Imperial outpost on the Nexus. Take the battle to the enemy. But among the huge crystals, there was also an observatory. A wise man would probably ask the scientists exactly what he had first. Hmm. How wise was he? As the Farfarer sailed towards the Nexus, Renardo wondered if the core had been created to silence the stone, or even to feed its hunger. Well, honestly, he didn't care. He felt terrific. And he appreciated the quiet inside his head. The Nexus was infested with ravens, but that didn't bother Renardo. With each death, the converted Iblis stone in his gauntlets glowed brighter, and he felt stronger. Wow. <laughs> he was getting a bit bloodthirsty, wasn't he? Well, he wasn't worried. He was a warrior. They're supposed to be bloodthirsty. absorbed in the stone was doing its job perfectly. Renardo could feel a little eldritch jolt every time he downed a raven, but then it flowed into the glowing stone the way water flows down a riverbed. It all felt perfectly natural, as if all his life, this was what he had been meant to do. Renardo tore through the last remaining guards at the outpost like hot coffee through snow. There was a far speaker toad here. He called the council speaker. He knew she would be thrilled. And she was. She wanted him to come back to base. They had plans to discuss, and a medal to give him. A large, golden medal. Great, said Renardo. Let's talk about who else I can kill. Then the far speaker croaked again. Hello, Renardo. He said. If you get sick of slaughtering second-rate birds in the Nexus, I'm waiting for you in the mountains. Zenobia. She missed him. She loved him. Once she saw how awesome he'd become, maybe she'd join him. A kiss and... and... Well, if she did refuse for some reason, he was no match for him now.
Zenobia was taunting him. No doubt she hoped to lure him into a trap. Well, he was nobody's sucker. Especially not hers. He carried victory in his gauntlet. He would go where the council pointed him. As he set foot on the island, Bernardo felt energized, like when he was hunting or dancing. Then he smelt it, the stench of ravens. It was a good thing he was here too, before they tripped over the secret base. He was really saving the Council Toad's bacon, so to speak. He missed her. Not Zenobia, Hypatia, the kid's mother. Renato had never thought he'd date a librarian. He'd always figured himself for the barmaid type. But then, he'd never figured the library of Uba would have comic books, or that Hypatia would know anything about them. He missed her. Renato had an artifact that made him practically a godlike warrior. All he had to do now was collect his medal, head for the Imperial fleet, and raise some hell. See? Renato was a hero of the revolution. He deserved a medal. Soon, he deserved every medal they had, and, and hopefully one big medal ceremony in front of everybody with trumpets so everyone could know what he'd accomplished. Sleep tight, thought Renato. The long stairs. So he was close to the rebel base. Nothing was on fire. So far, so good. Inside the rebel base, Renato was invited to the council speaker's private chambers. So, this is the Iblis Stone, he said. I can feel its power. Renato told her how he had fed the core to the stone and made something even more useful than either. Crazy like a fox, she croaked. And Renato chuckled as if he'd never heard the joke before. We've given you the best quarters and a bottle of Tantalonian firewater, all for you. So they'd remembered. He woke in the morning with the sweetest of hangovers. But the Iblis Stone was gone from his gauntlet. The corridors were empty, except for a few rebels who looked just as hungover as him. Come on, you'll miss the battle, they yelled. Renardo added sail as the Farfarers scudded across the sky. Who could have taken the Iblis Stone? Was it some Imperial spy? He would find him, and kill him, and take the stone back. Renardo had a bad taste in his mouth. He was killing ravens, but it wasn't fun. It felt like a chore. Oh, Renardo hated chores. As a fox kid, he'd gone hungry rather than clean his room. He still didn't clean his room, he just moved house every few years. Who had the Iblis Stone anyway? Up ahead, he could hear screaming and croaking and cawing. But who was winning? Renato had a feeling that was the back door to something. But what? Just... 
As she ran forward, Renata noticed that some ravens were starting to ignore him, just running away. Who were they running from? Some hero of the revolution? If some other so-called hero of the revolution had the stone and tried to take his victory and his medals, Renato was going to be seriously pissed off. He was the hero, not some other bozo. Finally, Renato came to the Emperor's ship. Zenobia lay dead in front of it. The ship was a wreck. Ravens lay dead, sprawled everywhere. Bloody feathers spattered across the deck in the dock. The council speaker came out. She was waving a sword around like a flag. Look at me, Renato! She croaked. The Iblis stone on the sword was black as coal. Now I will be Empress. And all shall tremble before me, she croaked. So the stone had her. It was in her brain, whining for blood. I'm afraid I can't allow that, said Renato, and moved to fight her. Toads are not usually good with swords. Something about the footwork. And the council speaker was not even a warrior. She was always tripping over things, which is quite an, an impressive achievement when you're a toad. Yet somehow, she was pressing Renardo backwards as he desperately tried to keep her sword away from his throat. Look, uh, why don't you keep the stone? He asked. You deserve it. Blood and souls for Iblis, she croaked. Blood and souls. She got under his guard with her sword. It was just the tip. But sometimes just the tip is enough. He could feel his soul being sucked into the stone. As he died, he felt... Embarrassed more than anything else. 